Let's try uh, a little nomenclature here. So um, how would we name, so what's the name of this compound? But what's the name of this compound? You can see this is more complicated. This is what we would call a branched hydrocarbon. By the way, I should also say these are what we would call alkanes. Um, an alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon. An alkane is a hydrocarbon with no double or triple bonds. So what we're still working on here is not just hydrocarbons, but alkanes. Working on alkanes, alkanes are hydrocarbons with no uh, double or triple bonds. Okay, so this is what we would call a branched alkane. You know what the name of this would be? Yeah, um, two-methylbutane. Excellent, good. So what's our systematic approach here? First of all, we need to name the par uh, first of all, we need to number the parent chain. Uh, and the parent chain is the longest chain of carbons. So um, here we need to name the longest chain of carbons. So I can number them like this. One, two, three, four. This group over here is what we now call a substituent. And this is what we would call the main chain or the parent chain. So the parent chain is the long chain, and anything else that's attached to the long chain is what's called a substituent. Now theoretically, I could also have done the numbering like this. I could have started the numbering from either the left or the right. And one of the main things you're testing on is which direction you should number from. Well, you want to choose numbers that give the substituent the lowest possible number. You want to number from a direction that gives the substituent the lowest possible number. give the substituent the lowest possible number. So this is superior because it gives the substituent the number two number. And this gave the substituent the number three number. And now we need to name this substituent. Well, how many carbons are in this substituent? One. And what is the root for one carbon? Meth. That's right. Men eat pickled beets. So first in that series is meth. Now, when something's on the main chain, we use the suffix "-ain". But when, suffix, when something is a substituent, we use the suffix "-ul". So this will be called a methyl group. This is called, whoops, let me ask you what it's called. So, um, what would be, so again, we have four carbons here. What's the name of an alkane with four carbons? Oh, that's the butane. That's right, so this would be butane. And we need to say where the methyl group is. Well, the methyl group here is on the number two, so this would be two methyl butane. In this case, people might leave the number out because there's really no other place the methyl could be. Um, if the methyl was over here, it wouldn't be butane anymore. Uh, but we can just leave the number in to learn this technique. So this would be two methyl butane. The number is what we could call a locator. So for every substituent, you need a locator. Every substituent needs a locator to say where the substituent is. That's why we have to number the parent chain. So the first step is number the parent chain. That's something that you don't want to skip. Physically write down the numbers in the parent chain. Make sure it's the longest chain and that you're numbering to give the substituent the lowest possible number. So this would be 2-methylbutane. Okay, so that's a logical way to name this compound. If you saw this name, you should be able to come up with this compound. I have a question about this one, actually. Because I was thinking of how I would name it. So I know that... Because um, in my class, we didn't, I know what they are now, but like we didn't go over the isopropyl and the tertiary mm -hmm. butyl and all that. Right. So you only use those terms in, a, like, would you say tertiary butyl on a branch only? That's right. Okay. I was just. For the most part. Actually, they, um, occasionally they are used to kind of to name the main chain, but um, that's pretty rare. So for the most part, those are used for branched substituents. Okay. That's right. Cool. Thank okay. you. Um, So let's name this compound. So let's start by numbering the parent chain. Good. That's good. So the key 
key thing here is that we've got to include this in the parent chain. So no one said that the parent chain has to be all horizontal. Um, and it's, it's really, you could name this number one or you could name this number one. It doesn't matter. But the important thing is that the parent chain here has four carbons. It doesn't have to be all horizontal. It just has to be the longest possible chain. So here this is the longest possible chain uh, with uh, four carbons. So what would be the name of this compound? This is also the chain that builds the chain? Yeah, same compound as before. We were talking about how pictures can look different and still be the same compound. This is still 2-methylbutane. Um, just because it looks different doesn't mean that it is a different compound. Okay, so now let's try naming this compound. Um, so let's start by numbering the parent chain. for the longest uh, possible chain. So what's the longest chain you can find? Phase three. Okay, so let's put in some numbers for that. Okay. So we can put in these numbers. Now in this case, there's a bunch of identical ways we could put in numbers. You could put in the numbers like this. That would also be a chain of three. Or you could put in numbers like this. It doesn't matter as long as they all have the, those are, these are all equivalent to each other. So you can put in any of these sets of, uh, whoops, any of these sets of numbers. Okay. Uh, do you know what this name is, would be? Um, the 2,2-dimethyl propane. Good. All right. So um, let's go through that. So, um, so let's start by naming the parent chain here. So what would be the name of this parent chain? men eat pickled propane. And now, how many carbons are in this substituent? One. One. And what's the, the name for one carbon? Uh, methyl. Good, because it's a substituent, so it should be methyl. But there's actually two of those methyl groups. Mm -hmm. Now, when there's two substituents, we need a numerical prefix, so this is called dimethyl. Mm -hmm. Because there's two of these substituents, this would be dimethyl. Good. So it's, oh, so it's 2,2 dimethyl? Yeah. Let's see why. What's the location of this substituent? On the 2. And what's the location of this substituent? On the 2. Alright, so logically speaking, <laughs> since there's two different substituents, we need two different locators. Theoretically, they could be on different carbons. They just happen to be on the same carbon here. So I think this is the name you gave. So that's right. 2,2 two dimethyl propane. Okay. Um, a lot of people tend to... Um, get this wrong, half of the people remember that they need two numbers, and then they forget that they need the prefix die. And the other half of the people remember that they need the prefix die, and they forget that they need the two numbers. Uh, but we need to, so there's two ways that we're indicating that there's two different uh, substituents here. Okay. 